pretty, isn't it? Look at that. Not a cloudy day. That is the power station. There is a layer of cloud high above it, but that is not cloud. That's the power station. Big streak of smoke. Oh, I've just come from Oxford. This big streak of smoke went right across the horizon. Got a nice hill here. Put wind turbines on it. Oh no, you can't put wind turbines up, it ruins a view. This is a beauty spot. It's an area of outstanding natural beauty. You can't put a wind turbine here. It'll look horrible. It might even make tiny amounts of noise that you won't be able to hear over the roar of the wind itself. Are we insane? I wrote in support of a wind turbine that somebody is hoping to build in the vicinity of the power station. That area there. Not to mention that the landscape in said area is absolutely covered in electricity pilots. I can't possibly think why. I can see them all across the horizon there. They probably won't show up on the camera. And again, all the way across the horizon there. At this distance, the pylons don't really show up. And nor, for that matter, would a wind turbine. The vitriolic replies I had to my letter, the aggression, the hatefulness that I had to my letter supporting the idea of a wind turbine in Sutton Courtney was extreme. And yet the people are quite happy to live with that. That power station's been there the best part of 40 years. So chances are anyone who hasn't been in Sutton Courtney for 40 years was quite prepared to buy a house in the shadow of that. And yet they're moaning about a wind turbine. We have gone nuts. Are we completely mad? Have we so totally lost the plot Look at that. If we think we can carry on treating our environment like that, we have another think coming. Nuclear power isn't going to do it because nuclear reactors have to run at a constant steady load. Which means you need power stations like that one to cut in and take up the slack every time power demand goes up or down, because it does. Not that that matters, because when a power station is running off load, it actually only takes 10% of the fuel to run it, of running on load. So having it backing up alternative forms of energy makes a lot of sense. But the point being is if you have to give back up the nuclear reactors, which cost an absolute fortune to build and never seem to work right, and the taxpayer always gets lumbered with the absolutely ginormous cleanup bills when they don't work, you might as well do it with renewables. I had a job once. I had a job to deliver the renewable energy that the quote greenest government ever wanted delivered, unquote. They broke all of their promises. Now, these weren't vague promises, these were set in stone contracts and they broke them company which had been set up at great expense with lots of input from big investors like Santander in the city of London suddenly became economically unviable and now we're looking at a situation where huge fortunes will be paid to lawyers, solicitors and barristers rather than the engineers and designers and builders of solar farms and wind farms. Germany is covered in solar panels. Everywhere you look, there are solar panels. Every second barn, every third or fourth house. I'm looking at a few here. I can see barns in the distance. If this was Germany, I kid you not, at least three of them would have solar panels all over their roof. Because I've been to Bavaria and 
on a business trip and there are solar panels everywhere. The Germans have something like 10,000 solar panels for every one that we have. They have a higher standard of living than us. So why is it that they can afford solar panels and have a better standard of living and we can't afford solar panels and yet we're bankrupt? I think the reason why we're bankrupt is that we keep paying foreign suppliers huge amounts of money so that we can burn their overpriced fuel to do stuff like that. We are hemorrhaging money. As we compete with China and India for coal and gas and other resources, those costs keep going up and up and up. That makes the Arabs and the Russians fabulously wealthy. It is breaking the back of our economy. That is simply not coal going up in smoke, that's money going up in smoke. That is our future going up in smoke. For years and years, with oh so condescending and patronising voices, have told us that oh, renewable energy is very, very nice, you long haired hippie, but it's too expensive. The same argument was used 300 years ago. Getting rid of slavery is a very nice idea, but it's too expensive. Cost has become the quotes, justification, unquote, for exploitation of the most hideous kind ever since money was invented. It's very nice, but it's too expensive. I've got a hybrid car. I've wanted hybrid and electric cars for years. But every time I talked about it, oh, it's too expensive. Nobody's going to want to buy too expensive hybrid cars. You know, they won't be interested. They're quite happy to spend huge amounts of money on hideous four-wheel drive Posemobiles with CD changes and sunroofs and all the luck. But they can't have a, oh no, it's too expensive. They won't want it. Fortunately, Toyota bucked the trend and went on to produce the most best-selling car in Japan of all time, the Toyota Prius. You know, I am fed up. I am thoroughly fed up of being told that renewable technology is too expensive. I've got a little boiler at home that not only heats the house, it actually generates electricity and uses the waste heat to heat the house. It's called combined heat and power. It's a rarity. Combined heat and power is where the monumental amounts of waste energy that that power station is throwing away through its cooling towers is used instead for domestic heating. One of the first ever combined heat and power projects was proposed for Battersea Power Station all those years ago where they wanted to use the waste heat to heat the local community. Oh, it's too expensive, they said, so it never happened. That very power station over there, they talked about using the waste heat to heat the local community to save energy. Oh, it's too expensive. They just couldn't be blue and bothered. If this sounds like a rant, it is. There's no money in our economy anymore. The public sector workers are currently on strike, as I speak, fighting to save their pensions. I don't have a pension. I don't even have a job. I'm an engineer in renewable energy and I don't have a job. And the same people who would not spend money on renewable energy, oh, it's too expensive, are bankrupting the country by allowing us to pour, and I mean absolutely pour, huge amounts of our precious foreign reserves into buying fuel so we can fill the sky with crud. Have we completely and totally lost it? We have far more wealth than our ancestors could dream of, and yet we won't even put a tiny amount of that wealth into renewable energy. The large-scale solar program that cost the fate, the shutting down of which cost me my job, was saved just 1% of the amount of money this government spends on the NHS. Madness. Madness.